Uncle Joshua, the But Better Recipe YouTube chef and number one New York Times bestseller, otherwise known as Joshua Weissman, where today I'm going to be breaking down and going into some of the finer details of his recent AD open door home door. Oh, AD. A little early, but come on in. Welcome to my home. Uh, I obviously don't live in a kitchen. This is where I actually live. The kitchen is over there, but we'll get to that after we get to know each other. This house is really interesting. It was custom built by Matt Ficus, very cool architecture firm in Austin. It is a modern interpretation of an A.D. Stanger home. If you don't know A.D. Stanger, you don't know architecture. So when I first heard him say that, I was like, well, that just goes to show how well my seven years of architectural education served me. However, unless you are very familiar with the Austin, Texas area, it's very unlikely that A.D. Stinger is someone that you would have heard of. From my understanding, this was originally an A.D. Stinger home, which was remodeled by Matt Ficus Architects. And what I would say is that Matt Ficus Architects have done an incredible job of honoring some of these mid-century roots, where I would actually say that this reinterpretation itself is actually more inspired by the great Frank Lloyd Wright than A.D. Stenger, with its beautiful hardwood ceilings and overhanging eaves, as well as references to organic architecture and the Usonian house. You can really see this idea of organic architecture referenced in the plan, where you can see that it's characterized by this interdependence of rooms where they'll overlap on the corners and be incredibly connected to the outdoors through the glazing where you'll also notice that this home references some modernist architectural ideas like the round plan, where spaces are often interconnected but distinguished by level too, where the home you'll see becomes more private as you make your way down to the master bedroom. All right, I know you wanna see my kitchen. Let's take a gander. So let me show you some of my favorite things. This used to just be like typical white quartz and I felt like this house is too nice to just have plain white countertops. And so I decided to invest a little bit of money and I, I got these really great Carrara marble countertops. And I think, I think it looks good. You tell me, you think it looks good? If you don't like it, you can tell me, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt my feelings, I like it. So as Joshua's a chef, undoubtedly the main selling point of this home was its kitchen, as arguably it's its main characteristic as it's immediately visible from the entryway while also being interconnected with the main living space. One thing that immediately stands out to me is that this kitchen is just filled with light as it occupies this incredible double height space as well as having windows for the backsplash. So when you're cooking, you're also at the same time enjoying the views to the outdoors. Honestly, Joshua hasn't changed all that much from the original design other than changing out the white countertops for this Carrara marble, which is an incredible flex as it is eye-wateringly expensive. Now, from a usage standpoint, I don't think that this is a way that I would choose to spend a renovation budget, as when you're cooking, the last thing you really want to be doing is worrying about things spilling and staining your beautiful marble countertops. But seeing this used extensively here, especially as the backsplash behind the stove, it kind of makes me wince as when you're frying something or cooking with sauces, the amount of splashes that you get from cooking is undoubtedly going to leave some marks. Now, again, from a usability standpoint, this kitchen comes with matte black cabinets, which are something that I have talked about in depth before on this channel as being absolute fingerprint magnets. Now, I can't really see that I see any fingerprints in this video at this resolution, but no doubt Joshua is going to have a tough time keeping those clean, where again, much like the marble, this is a material which is going to need a lot of upkeep. Now, I know people get really, really up in arms about what kind of stove should you use, Josh? I'm gonna help you out. I got you on this one, okay? Listen, you can go the more architectural route and get a lock Cornu and spend a ton of money, but you know what? It's never gonna have the performance of a wolf. It just won't. It's little baby burners that look beautiful. Now lock Cornu is never gonna sponsor me, but whatever. Now, much as you'd expect as a chef, he has some really nice appliances in this kitchen, like this large wolf range cooker, which is upwards of 10K. And in the video, he talks about a La Cornu stove, which are even more expensive, but like eight times the cost. So this is definitely one area where it seems that he's chosen not to flex, but actually put functionality first. And on top of this, for all you coffee lovers out there, something that they didn't mention in the video is that he's got a beautiful Lamazocco espresso machine, 
and the incredible DF64 grinder. There wasn't also that much said about the dining area in this video, and although that dining bench and table do seem absolutely beautiful, it's incredibly hard to get into a dining bench like that, as the table legs just simply get in the way. So personally, I would have much rather seen that dining table rotated 90 degrees and set up with four of those beautiful Hans Wegner wishbone chairs rather than just the two. All right, now that you've been in my kitchen, you've basically been in my bedroom. So let's go to the primary. So we've made it to the bedroom. Welcome. Kind of like my kitchen, I like my bedroom space to be clean and to be minimalist and not have a ton of stuff, but feel livable. I didn't want a ton of stuff on the walls. I thought, why put 50 little things on the wall in the bedroom when we could just put like one real big fun thing? And I found, actually found this on Etsy. They make this by hand, it's hand tufted. They dyed all these different colors to make it in this funky shape. I just thought it looked cool. It brought color into the room. This room is very just like one color. So I thought, well, let's bring a little bit of nature into it. And speaking of nature, this kind of helps with the nature element too. When we have these big, sort of like sliding doors. The jacuzzi's right there. The bed is here. We go from in here to out there. We close this. The cat can stay in and watch us have fun. In the bedroom is where I think you see this connection to the outdoors the most, as you have this incredible sliding door, which has you connected right to that garden terrace with a hot tub and seating all on the same level. I mentioned earlier how it looks to me that this reinterpretation was inspired by Frank Lloyd Wright's Usonian plan, which is usually characterized by an L-shaped plan around a garden terrace, where this will usually feature a really open connection to this inner space, but then have clear story windows for natural light, but also privacy from the other side. When you wake up in the morning and you press the little clicker button and then these roll up and the sun's rising and you've got like your backyard and the pizza oven you see, I could probably see Kate over there like eating a bagel. <laughs> it's nice to connect to the outside and have that indoor outdoor experience. I like feeling openness and this room isn't huge, but this window makes it feel as big as a backyard. Despite natural light being absolutely incredible for how a home feels, when it comes to sleep, this is where it can be a little bit problematic. So with windows this big with roller blinds, it's really hard to control the light so that it doesn't wake you up in the morning. Where I really find this to be a huge problem for me in the summer, which is why I'll always install blackout curtains in whichever room I'm choosing to sleep in. But I definitely think we're really getting into first world problems here. And for the most part, I think people would definitely choose having the luxury of incredible windows and a view out to the garden rather than a claustrophobic and cave-like blackout bedroom. Another thing I'll also mention is the, the tufted wall art that he went for. Although it isn't to my taste, what it does do is a great job of providing acoustic treatment to this space, so there isn't a bunch of reverb going throughout the room. Where this is something that is difficult to see with your eyes, but it's something that is experienced in a space, where an echoey bedroom can feel very unnerving and not very cozy. This was one of the last changes that I made. The countertops. We brought exactly the same Italian Carrara marble from in the kitchen to in here. This is the bathtub. I never use this. Actually, I've never used it. I'm a shower person, okay? I wanna stand up and get out. I don't have time to sit in the bathtub. I love this shower because I have all this space. If I wanna do this, I mean, I don't know why you would, but I could. Again, in the ensuite, through the use of clear story windows, it provides a bunch of natural light to what otherwise would be a very dark space without compromising this space's privacy. Another thing that also wasn't mentioned in the tour is that the toilet itself is enclosed in its own little cubicle, which makes this space really usable for couples alongside the double sink, which Joshua has also chosen to finish in this Carrara marble for continuity with the kitchen, which I think is a really noble thing to do as it respects the original architecture by swapping out one material for another instead of making the material palette a little bit of a jumble. Okay, so now we're in the bar slash library area. That's what I'm calling it. Originally, it was just like plain white compressed wood cabinetry and a little white desk. That was it. And so it's like this entire quadrant of the house that I never wanted to be in. There's nothing to do there. So I made it into a space where 
there's something to do. I'm kidding. It's not always about drinking. It's just, it's more about entertaining. You, you, even if you don't drink alcohol, we have zero proof stuff for our friends who don't drink alcohol. We have coffee, cold brew, sodas. Now, transitioning from the bar to what I'm calling the library. This area isn't just for reading or being a library. It's kind of a chill area. It's like a second living room. I wanted something that was like cool and relaxing. You can grab a quick drink. You can come sit down here or you can sit down on this cool chair. Uh, there's nothing better than being in a cool chair. Now, the den area is really quite nice, and I don't know if they've really changed this much from the original design, but it's a great way to separate the TV from the main living space. And it looks to me that the TV that they've gone for is the Samsung frame, which I really respect as it helps to disguise it a little bit when it's off by using it as a way to display art. Again, having this bar area here is really nice as it's still interconnected with the main living space, while also being slightly separate. And I can imagine that if you're hosting a large gathering, this is a really nice place to come to get a drink that's a little bit further away from all of the hustle and bustle that might be going on in the living area and kitchen. And what this space offers is a little bit of coziness and privacy that the main space doesn't have because it's so open. And this is really important to the whole architectural experience to ensure that it doesn't feel like you're living inside of a fishbowl. All right, so now we're gonna move into my office. Come on in. Now, this is actually a four bedroom home and it looks like Joshua has chosen to put his office inside one of the guest bedrooms, which is equipped with its own ensuite bathroom. And I can imagine that what this does is create for him a space which is a little bit separated from the main house by kind of being self-contained by having its own bathroom. And despite this room not really having too many characteristics, what I will say is that it is in desperate need of a rug, where what this will do is ground his desk to the center of the room, rather than allowing it to look like it's kind of just floating in the space as an afterthought, as well as acoustically treat it so the reverb isn't quite so harsh. But one thing that's a bit of a pity that they didn't show in the home tour is that this home actually has a basement with a garage and guest suite, which has a really nice connection to the outdoor pool, which they didn't really talk about at all. Where I can imagine that if you were to ever have a large outdoor gathering or a barbecue, this space would be absolutely incredible, equipped with sun lounges and a proper outdoor kitchen with proper appliances. But thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy my last video on my top 10 kitchen design mistakes.